I guess I'm live. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about tattoos. Uh, yesterday I was shared a uh, video about uh, whether certain passages were culturally conditioned, how to determine whether they were permanent or they're temporal. And so let me review that process a little bit, and we're going to take that process and apply it to tattoos. And uh, then we'll see what you think about it. Okay. Uh, first of all, to determine whether a, a, a passage is permanent or temporary, you have to do two things right off the bat. You got to look at what did it mean then? What does it mean now? Then you have to apply a hermeneutical process to it to determine that. And, and that hermeneutical process is this. If something is stated in the Old Testament and it has not been changed or altered or built upon in the new, then it is still applicable today. Okay. But if it has been changed or altered then there's some leeway involved. Okay, yeah. Then you have to, after you determine the, that process, you got to ask yourself four applicational things. Is the principle that that passage was implying transferable to today? And is the practice transferable today? In other words, it's repeatable. Or... It has no relevance at all to today. It's not repeatable. Or the principle is repeatable and the practice is only partially uh, repeatable. Okay, like did with the women, and, you know, with head covering. Uh, back in the, those days, we saw they wore a parka. Uh, if you were to, to make the principle and the practice transferable, then the principle of submission would be in play and you would demonstrate that principle, women would wear a complete parka, just like they did then. But if, it's, if the principle is uh, transferable, but the practice uh, is partial, then you'd wear a wedding ring or you know a hat on your head if you wanted to, whatever, to kind of demonstrate that inward submission. Or you can believe that it's not, has no relevance at all for today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's do tattoos. Uh, in, in Leviticus, uh, we have a very interesting uh, verse here. It says, you should not make any cuts for your body for the dead, nor make tattoo marks on yourself. I am the Lord. That's in Leviticus uh, 19.28. Okay. Now, what you're going to find in Leviticus is a whole lot of rules and regulations and laws that were put in place. Okay. So, first of all, look at the cultural situation then. What was God doing when he gave these Hebrews all these laws? Okay. And, 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 and he tells us he wanted to make a nation for himself. So in order to do that, he had to give them regulations and things to do that would be distinct from other nations, especially pagan nations. OK, and pagan nations were in the business of doing a lot of superstitious and they would cut themselves and they'd mark up their bodies and they would do all kind of crazy things. OK, um, they'd wear big earrings and put big things in their lips and put rings around their necks, all kinds of things. Okay. So many women in China, they would make their feet real small. I mean, they would do all kinds of things. Okay. Now, uh, what does that mean today? Now, yeah, a lot of young people today and, and older people too, that are getting a lot of tattoos. This seems to be a cultural trend. And people are always asking me, man, is it okay for Christians to get tattoos? And, and so my answer to them is, and, and I take them through this process uh, very, very, very carefully. Okay, now, here's the thing you got to understand about God. 
And, and that is that he wants each of us to be unique. Okay, in the Old Testament, he didn't want his people to look and represent like the rest of the world. Okay, so what does it say in the New Testament about that uh, concerning Christians? You know, and as I read to it, it says uh, we've been transferred. Uh, we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Make no provisions for the flesh. He wants us to also, he expanded on that. He says, I want you to be distinct, separate. And, and I have people, and, and Manny say, Manny, we're not under the law anymore. Yes, we are. <laughs> there are a lot of different laws in the Bible, you know. And uh, God didn't diminish the law. All the law, people don't understand about the law. The law doesn't save you. All the law does is reveal to you who you really are. You know, if there's no law, there's no transgression. Okay? But, uh, so we're still under the law in this, in, in a sense, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. You know, uh, we're under grace, Manny. We're, yeah, what does grace mean? It doesn't mean licentiousness. You know, I can do whatever I want to do. You know, I have freedom without responsibilities. Nobody's an island to themselves. They're going to represent somebody. Okay. So you got to get, if you really want to understand, you got to get to the heart of God on this whole matter here as to what was God trying to do? What did he really want from his people? He wanted them to be different, not alike. I read in the Bible, it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By then renewing your mind. Very young people, everybody wants to conform. They want to be like everybody else. Okay. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. Okay. But you're most unique and you most stand out for the Lord when you're different, not when you're alike. Okay. Now, getting a tattoo is not an unforgivable sin, but it does in many ways represent your heart. So, the bottom line is this, who do you want to please? You know, as, as I read in, the, in, in Ephesians, uh, a, a very interesting passage, it says in, in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, uh, for you were formerly in darkness, okay? I understand pagans and unbelievers want to cut up their body and put all kinds of ornaments on, and, and people get tattoos for many different kinds of reasons, you know? Some for initiation in gangs and others, they get them because they want to look cool, so they do it as a bonding thing, or they want to show a model or something about their philosophy of life. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why people do it, okay? But this is what God is saying for us to think when he says, you know, be not conformed, but be transformed by the union of your mind. He says, for you are formerly darkness, but you are, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Then he goes on to say, uh, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. And that's what I always tell people, look, whether you want to do this or not do it, who do you want to please? If you want to please God, then I would not get a tattoo or mark up your body. I would do everything possible to be different than the world. Okay? The greatest tattoo you can have as a Christian is to put on Christ and put on his righteousness and let his light shine through you, okay? But when you put on tattoos and you try to look like the world, that diminishes what God wants you to be an ambassador for, okay? So again, when you're dealing with uh, passages like this, you got to look, what did it mean then? What does it mean now? What was God's heart? What was the principle here? The principle was separation. I want you to be distinct. I want you to be net. That has not changed. In fact, it has been expanded on. And God has given us his Holy Spirit that resides in us to let his 
uh, light shine through us so that we can walk in newness of life. Okay? So, is this repeatable? To not cut your body to make me? Absolutely. Is the principle still in effect? Yes. Okay? Now, if, if you feel otherwise, <laughs> you got a different way of, of appropriating that, and you say, well, we're not under the law. Yes, we are. Okay? God didn't, Jesus didn't come to nullify the law. He came to build on the law. But you got to understand what the law is for. Okay? And yeah, we're all under grace, you know? Uh, okay, you know, there's so many of these, there's hundreds of these kind of passages in, in the Bible, not just about this, but about foot washing, about the Lord's Supper, about baptism, you know, uh, tithes, giving. Uh, there are so many culturally conditioned passages. Unless you have a process for hermeneutically determining what is applicable for today and what practice is applicable, you're going to come up with all kind of silly things. Okay, denominations do it, religious organizations do it, cults do it, all kind of people do it. God doesn't want that. God wants us to, uh, you know, do what is pleasing to him. And, and really, if that's really the basic bottom line there. Find out what pleases the Lord and do those things. You all have a good day. Stay in the word. And God bless you all.